Are you looking for some ideas for using your 6x8 patterned paper or for making 5x7 cards? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies in time. So let's take a look. Today I have 6x8 paper busting template for 5x7 cards, number 9, which means there are 8 other ones available that specifically show you how to take 6x8 patterned paper and turn it into 5x7 cards with no scraps. If you prefer A2 size cards, I have plenty of ideas for that as well. I have 20 ideas for 6x8 paper and A2 cards, but today I'm focusing on 5x7 cards, and you can download this template as the first link in the video description. I'm going to be showcasing scrapbook.com's brand new Willow Lane pattern collection. I believe it will be coming in A2 and 6x8 patterned sizes and um, I plan to be sharing with you this on the day it is released. So sometimes there's a deal or something like that if you want to check it out. I want to do a flip through of the pattern paper just in case you're interested. So it's the you can use whatever 6x8 pattern paper you have though. So scrapbook.com Willow Lane. And there's very Halloween, there's um, some bats, there's ghosts, but today I'm gonna try to like push some of the paper towards a fall card and so not so Halloween-y. Um, there's those ghosts. There are the jack-o'-lanterns, the pumpkins on the other side though. So if you can use just some of the back sides of the paper, you might find that you can lean it a little away from Halloween. With these little houses with jack-o'-lanterns and ghosts, kind of spooky trees here, more ghosts. Um, we're gonna use this candy paper today. And then finally, these cute little critters. When I saw these, I was like, oh, I'm, I wanna work with those, they're adorable. So I'll be interested to see if there's some coordinating products to go with this collection too. Scrapbook.com did send this to me in advance to share with you. So just wanna be upfront about that. I am a scrapbook.com affiliate and I use affiliate links from them in the video description. Okay, we're gonna take this six by eight pattern paper. Again, use whatever six by eight pattern paper you have, and we're going to cut it according to the sketch. It says to cut a three by three square and some one by five inch rectangles. So we're gonna start by cutting the six by eight and a half to three by eight, and then we'll cut three inches off the top. And then we're gonna cut our one inch strip. So I'm going, I'm just measuring backwards. So I went from three to two to one inches. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Pull some orange cardstock for my scrap to make, or for my, yeah, for my scraps to make the cardstock mats. Now these cardstock mats for the back strips, they are called for it to be one and a quarter by five. So there's nothing taller than them. Um, it's just a little bit wider. And so it's gonna stretch all the way across the card. And then here, my three by three is gonna get three and a quarter by three and a quarter. All of those measurements are right there on the card sketch. So if you're ever wondering what size the mats are. And I wanna see what I can get out of my cardstock scraps before I go to something brand new. So I see this is five inches. Okay, I, then I can get some one and a quarter inch strips out of it. That's what I always do first. So these do create no patterned paper scraps. It is not no cardstock scraps. But I talk a lot on my channel about what I would do with cardstock scraps as well. And also I just, I do what I'm doing now where I come to my cardstock scraps first when it is time to make a new card. And so that often uses up a good amount of them. So I got a couple of strips out of that and I'll just keep going till I have enough for what I need. And so then again, this is, I need a three and a quarter by three and a quarter, that was really close. These small scraps like this, I don't typically worry about. Sometimes if I have a couple, I will like, this one, I, I mean, that's just trash to me, but like this one, I was like, well, I could glue a couple of these together and make like fake foam tape, where I take a couple layers of cardstock, glue it together and put it behind an element. To keep my little pieces organized, like all the cardstock um, cardstock mats and pattern paper and even the card base, I like these scrapbook.com large trays. I like them because they stack and then they don't fall over, but you can absolutely just find like some trays that you have in like maybe like cardboard box tops that, you know, lids of boxes or something like that would work well for this. Um, or you could just leave them in stacks on your desk, but I like to keep them organized so I don't lose any pieces. And for embellishments today, I'm gonna to put the cardstock to the side. We'll um, return to that shortly, but I wanted to make some uh, like 
specific embellishments for the fall theme today. So I'm using the scrapbook.com fall treats die set. Something I like about scrapbook.com uh, die sets is they often include this on the back where it shows you how they look assembled so that you know what all the little pieces are for and you can see that some of them are used on like multiple, you can use them in you know, different ways on the set. Like the sprinkles can be used on both the cupcake and the donut. But I'm gonna show you an alternate version of sprinkles today because those of you who know me know I'm not really big with the teeny tiny die cuts. So today I have cut out the donut and the icing for the donut. And then I also cut out the leaf because I get, I wanna lean towards fall. I could do the pumpkin because I think pumpkins are also very fall. Um, but I thought, well, the leaf will look like a cute little like candy embellishment you might put on it. And so then I glued, I picked some scrapbook.com cardstock because they have various, um, like the boho pack and things like that. So, you know, but you could, this is another great way to go through your scraps first to cut out some things. You might even find that you could cut out, like, so we have this large piece that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we're gonna cover most of it. We're actually gonna use the stripey side, I think, for this, but we're gonna cover a good portion of it. So you could take something like this and cut a donut or icing out of the center if it's the right color. I like doing little things like that to save on cardstock as well. So we glue the icing on top of the donut, and then we, I think that it is helpful to start with gluing down your largest embellishment first. So because here I want, even if you were cutting out the sprinkles, I'm gonna glue down my leaf first so that I know there's gonna be room for it. And this is also a scrapbook.com glitter paper. And then I want to do something different instead of those teeny tiny die cuts. So instead of adding teeny tiny die cuts, I'm actually going to use pops of color. I have iced mocha and Rudolph red and I'm going to make little tiny dots on them to look like sprinkles. Here's the first one that I did. I do recommend taking a scrap paper and just kind of testing it out just to kind of see you don't have like an air bubble or some kind of like problem where they're stuck in there. And you can uh, just clean off the tip if you're having any issues with some like dried on. You know, sometimes if you leave your pops of color open you might get a little bit dried in the like top area there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna put teeny tiny little dots all over the cupcake. And I'm gonna leave some room for some of the brown dots as well. Oop, see there's a good example of like, if I had done that right on my donut, I'd be pretty disappointed. So I wanna make sure things are going well before I bring it to my final product. These are going to take a little bit of time to dry and sometimes they create like a little bit of a peak. So it kind of looks like a chocolate chip to me. If you want to lessen that look, if you want it to not have so much of that like pulled up effect, then something you can try doing is one, putting a little bit less of the enamel or the um, pops of color down but you can also tap it like this. And sometimes that kind of moves the pops of color, like the little, the little droplet kind of reshapes it a bit. That would be my best tip for avoiding that. But also for me, I'm like, they're kind of supposed to look like little bits of candy. So if they look like little um, chocolate chip drops, that's totally fine for especially this particular use case. I took the coordinating or Similar, so there's a pumpkin spice stamp set from scrapbook.com that reminds me of a lot of the images you see in that die set that I used earlier. The sentiments go really well for it. I like autumn treat for someone sweet. That's really cute. Um, I didn't have a specific purpose for my card, so I went for just a simple hello fall today. You can get coordinating scent or dies that also cut out the sentiments. And so I cut my uh, sentiment right out of the center of this piece that I'm then going to glue my patterned paper on. I think that 
if you were using a similar pattern paper, this is not so busy that I couldn't have stamped directly onto it, but since I wasn't really using any extra paper, I thought it might be nice to let it kind of pop up a bit more. I'm gonna use my already dried um, donut here and glue that on. You, This is a good time. You could pop something up if you want for a little bit of extra interest or keep it flat for mailing. And maybe add it on a bit of an angle or something interesting like that. If you were wanting to use your card the same day, like put it in the mail the same day or bring it to an event, maybe the pops of color wouldn't be such a good idea and you would want to switch instead to using those die cuts because I do think it's good to give them a little bit of time to really set and dry and if you squish them in an envelope um, the same day, that might be a problem. Okay, and then similarly, we have our candy paper. So I used the stripes so that it was nice and readable. You could really see my sentiment and my embellishment, but then I'm gonna put the candy in the background. So kind of keeping in with this sweets theme of the donut. And that's why I think using the sentiment like autumn treats uh, would be great with this, or there's one that says um, pumpkin spice season is here. That seems pretty relevant to this. You could have, a, they could pretend that's like a pumpkin spice um, sorry, I just ripped my paper here, but it's going to be okay. I'll show you that. Uh, pumpkin spice donut there. That does look like a pumpkin spice donut to me. You can let me know in the comments. Are you somebody who likes pumpkin spice or what fall flavor do you like? I kind of lean towards things that are like apple flavored for the fall. That's more what I personally like, but I, there are some pumpkin spice things that are certainly fun to try. So I did rip my paper here. That's okay, actually, because we are going to need to put one of them in the center and then it's gonna get covered up anyway if you look at the card. So, you know, mistakes happen <laughs> to everyone, but there's usually a way around them. And then we'll add some more adhesive to the back of these and arrange it according to the sketch. And so we have one completed card and once my uh, pops of color dry, I can make a second completed card. Now I recognize there's quite a bit of white space in the background here and because I chose a pattern paper that has a white background, it's, you know, for some people that might not be enough pop. And so I do have some suggestions on what you can do. I will leave a link to another video about like what you could do with white space. And I also have a video where I talk about like kind of changing up patterned paper. So something, if you kind of wish this had a little more color, maybe you could ink the edges around the center panel, for instance, and that would give it a little more color or using a colored card base that's in a coordinating color. All of those things could help battle that if this isn't your particular style. If you found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial and check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.